Hello, we are given this system of three equations uh, in four unknowns. And uh, we're told that we want to re-represent it as a vector equation, as a matrix equation, and as an augmented matrix. Um, this problem was pulled straight from a past midterm. And so when you learn how to do this, you should see it on a test and be like, oh, okay, three points, three points. Because uh, once you know it, it is very straightforward. And it's just like a recipe that you follow every time. Um, and you should be able to get it right without much trouble. So for part A, we want to rewrite it as a vector equation. So to do that, we're going to split it up into the common terms with the unknown variables. So we'll do something like this. And we'll make different vectors that each have the same unknown variable. And we'll set it equal to a vector, um, which is the right-hand side of this equation. It's the constants. Um, and wherever you see like a space here, it's because there's no x1. So we're just going to pretend, or we're just going to write it as 0 times x1. And then over here, we have no uh, fourth x3. So we say 0 times x4. Sorry, we have no fourth x4. So we say 0 times x4. OK, to write it as a vector equation, we're just going to do just that. So we have our first vector. Looks like this. We add it to our next vector which is all x2s. And then we add. So keep in mind that you always want to have these plus signs. And then whenever there's a negative coefficient, you account for that inside the vector itself. So here is our third vector. And then we add x4, 0, and negative x4. And this is equal to our right-hand side, which is 4, 1, 2, negative 2. So notice that there are only three entries in each vector, and that's because we were given three equations uh, in the problem. The next step, we can go one step further, and we can factor out the unknown variables. So we have x1 times negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus x2 times 1, 1, 1, plus x3 negative 4, negative 1, 2, plus x4, 1, 0, negative 1, equals 4, 1, negative 2. And notice, if you distribute, because we learned how to do these scalar multiplication of vectors, if you distribute this x1 into each component, and then you do that for each vector, and then you add up like the first equation, you get one you, the first component of each vector, you will recover this first equation up here. And if you do the same thing, you add all the second components together and set it equal to 1, then you recover this second equation here. So this is just, we've rewritten the three uh, different equations as one vector equation, but it means the same thing. Okay, so this here is your answer to part A. Okay. Part B we want to write it as a matrix equation. So you're like, what's a matrix equation? Well, if you remember from lecture, it takes this form, ax equals b, where x is a vector, b is a vector, and then a is a matrix. And a matrix looks kind of like a vector, but it's a little bit wider. So like, instead of just having one column, it'll have two columns. So this is just an example matrix. And uh, we talk about matrices a lot in terms of column vectors. And so you say this matrix has two column vectors, the vector 1, 2, and the vector 3, 4. And if you multiply a matrix by some vector, I'm making it up, 1, 2, then how do you compute this matrix times a vector? Well, this is very important. You take the first column vector of A, and you multiply it by the first entry in the vector, and then you add it to the second column vector of A, let's say that this matrix is called A, and then you multiply it by the second entry of the vector. And so essentially what you're doing by doing this matrix times a vector is you're taking a linear combination of the columns of the vector, where the weights of that linear combination are the entries in the vector, like over here called X. So what do I mean? So you do one times one, two, plus two times three, four, do you see how that's a linear combination of the columns of the A matrix? So then you can finish this out and you would have 1 times 1 plus 2 times 3 is 7. And then 1 times 2 plus 2 times 4 is 2 plus 8, which is 10. 
Okay, so that's just an example. So, but if you look back up here in the vector equation that we have, the left-hand side is uh, a linear combination. And then the weights are the unknown variables that we're trying to solve for in the system of equations. So we can rewrite this left-hand side right here uh, as a matrix times a vector. And the vector will have the weights of the linear combination as defined. And then the matrix will be composed where each column are, is these vectors. So let's do that. So let's make our A matrix is all of these vectors as the columns. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, 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 negative four, negative one, two, and then one, zero, negative one. So there's our A matrix. Then the vector X is composed of the unknown variable. So X1, X2, X3, and X4. Okay, so then if you if you compute this matrix times a vector, you get this linear combination. That's how you define a matrix times a vector. Okay, and then what is this equal to? It's equal to the right-hand side, this vector over here. 4, 1, negative 2. Okay, this is a matrix equation. This is your answer for part B. And then lastly, we want to write the we want to represent the system of equations as an augmented matrix. This is the fourth way that you can represent a system of equations. And to do that, you say, yeah, okay, we know that in system of equations we're going to have these unknown variables. And so we can just kind of assume that it's there and we don't have to write it. So to write an augmented matrix, it takes out the need to write these unknown variables. And so instead you just have this big vertical line, and then you have the right-hand side written in the augmented column. So it would look like this. Where this is the augmented column, and then this here is the original A matrix. So this is called an augmented matrix. Okay. Um, something to notice is that as we've moved through these different representations of a system of equations, we have made it much easier to write. So originally we had to have, we have to write three separate equations with pluses in between each term. Then as we go to a vector equation, we just combine it into one equation with vectors. So we don't have to keep writing pluses and minuses. Then as we go to part B, we write it as a matrix equation. Now we don't have to keep rewriting x1 every time it shows up. We just write it once over here in the x in the x vector. And then as we go from a matrix equation to an augmented matrix representation, we don't even have to write x1 through x4 at all. We just assume that. And so to be clear, though, this first column is the x1 column. The second column is the x2 column. The third column is the x3 column. And the fourth column is the x4 column. You don't have to write this when you're writing your augmented matrix, but what it means is that this first column vector of A or in your augmented matrix are the coefficients to the x1 unknown. So if we look, we have negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Those are the coefficients to the x1 unknown. Here we have negative 2, negative 1, and 0. So all the information is still there. It's just much more concise. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to do row reduction to um, take advantage of the augmented matrix and be able to actually solve the system of equations and get our answers for what x1, x2, x3, x4 have to be. Um, so stay tuned.